I don't want people to think that you've got to have that kind of space and that kind of organization in order to craft. I've been sharing videos to help you organize your crafting tools and supplies. So I thought it was only fair that I share with you how I organize my crafting tools and supplies. Or so I thought. I'll explain in a bit. So as I shared in my previous videos, my supplies are stored in our spare bedroom, but I actually craft in my living room at the opposite end of the apartment. And as I previously shared, I keep my paint and brushes out on my crafting table, along with my caddy containing my most frequently used tools and supplies. And I did find a Lazy Susan so I can spin my caddy for even easier access. If you saw my previous video on organizing tools, you'll know what I'm talking about. In addition to these items, I have a box containing more frequently used tools and supplies, including mats, sponge and other brushes in my favorite storage container, and specialty paints and paint pens. So on to my spare bedroom. As I've mentioned, this room serves a variety of purposes. This would include as my husband's closet, my non-Christmas holiday decor, my crafting supplies, my scrapbooking supplies, and my eBay inventory and shipping supplies. It is very full, but it is pretty well organized. So enough about this room. Here's how my craft supplies are organized. Now the first thing I want to point out is the use of these planter hooks from the Dollar Tree. I use them throughout this room, and if you have shelves, they are a great option for keeping larger items off of the floor, storing items in a bag, and storing your wreath forms. Now on these shelves are my banker's boxes, which contain my most commonly used supplies. This box essentially contains smaller wood pieces. I have dowels in here, a back of box of wood blocks. So it's at this point that I'm realizing my stuff really needs to be better organized. And I'm second guessing the wisdom of doing this video. On the one hand, it seems kind of hypocritical for me to post videos on organizing your supplies when my stuff is clearly not that well organized. But on the other hand, it is well real life. Ultimately, I decided that real life and not perfect was okay to share. So this box essentially contains smaller wood pieces. I have dowels in here, a backup box of wood blocks. In this plastic container, I have smaller things such as clothespins and smaller wood blocks. These aren't wood, obviously. They're the bottoms of plastic wine glasses that I used for another project. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but I have them in case I come up with some brilliant idea. If you have your own brilliant idea to share, please note it in the comments. I have some word pieces, popsicle sticks, and skewers down at the bottom. So this next box is larger wood pieces, such as frames and signs to make into something different. I also have a huge bag of wine corks that we got from a winery that I have planned for a specific project. And no, I did not drink all of those bottles of wine. This next box is floral foam and fabric that fast five times. Anyway, that is literally what is in this box. Moss, this wall sticker paper from Dollar Tree, a bit of fabric, some faux plants, and actually what is mostly in this box is styrofoam. This is from a gift packaging idea my husband and I had that did not work out so well. This box is for specific projects. Now most of the stuff I buy is just random, but sometimes I buy things for something specific. And now that I think about it, I should move those corks into this box. Anyway, I also have these koala themed items in here that I got in Australia that I'll be doing soon. So this is sort of my secondary general tools and supplies. It actually was in the living room, but I decided I only wanted one box out there. So now it lives in here. I have things in here such as my heat gun, colored glue sticks, backup paint and supplies, and other items that are either backups or items I don't use quite as often. This box basically has embellishments and is actually pretty well organized. These are my bead containers that were in my supply organizing video. In this shoe box, I have all of my glitter and glitter glue. This container, which had glitter tubes in it originally, has leftover glass stones and I have a few fabric flowers in the back corner. And I actually reused a small box to keep them snug back there in the corner. This box is all fall and Halloween. And this other is every other holiday or season other than fall, Halloween, or Christmas. Now I got all this super cute stuff for St. Patrick's Day and didn't have a chance to do anything with it. 
I was super disappointed, but I'll have some epic St. Patrick's projects next year. There's also Easter, Spring, and Valentine's in here. And one organizing tool that I really didn't mention in my organizing video are Ziploc bags. Definitely don't overlook any of the sizes as a great organizing option, especially if you're putting several things into, say, a shoe box, and then that will go into a larger box. And if you want to buy baggies specifically for organizing, I really prefer the ones with the sliding lock rather than the squeeze lock. It's just so much easier. Now over on this shelf, I have a bunch of kits. During the pandemic, I signed up for a number of subscriptions and ended up not having time to do any of them. Y'all might be seeing a kit series in the very near future. This bin has sewing items, this next one my resin supplies, and that last box has cups, vases, and other glass pieces. And heck, behind that are longer signs that just don't fit in a box. Now on this top shelf are all of my Christmas items. This box literally is completely full of all kinds of items with zero organization. And the rest are larger items that just don't fit in a box well. Now I mentioned in my other videos how much I love these carts. The drawers are large enough to be able to fit things in, but at the same time, you can really drill down and be specific with your organizing. Now a downside for me is that with the rainbow colors, I really can't move the drawers around because it would bug me if they weren't in the right color order. And since I do move things around in the drawers, I haven't put more permanent labels on them, but that is something I need to do. This set of drawers is basically more generic tools, including some that are also in boxes. I have some stencils and stickers here, this entire bag is nothing but koala stickers, and these key stickers I thought were so pretty, although I still am trying to figure out what I'm going to do with them. These buttons should go in with the Christmas stuff, but never mind because I don't want to have to get a stool out to be able to reach the box. Basically, I do need to reevaluate some of these drawers because some of these items should go in boxes or even out with my more frequently used tools, and some smaller items in the boxes can go in these drawers. The second cart I actually got from our trash. A neighbor was getting rid of it and I was like, thank you very much. Anyway, my idea with this cart is to house more project specific items. So I have jewelry making items here. These are stamps for card making and more card making items. I'm going to just point this out. It is ancient. It was my grandmother's and she gave it to me when she was teaching me to embroider when I was like seven or eight. So my big point in I think my big point in showing you all of this, so many YouTube crafters have like a whole dedicated crafting room. And I don't want people to think that you've got to have that kind of space and that kind of organization in order to craft. If you don't have this much space, don't have this much stuff. I like a lot of different kinds of crafts. Maybe you want to focus on a specific thing like resin work or jewelry work. Um, maybe you just want to do, you know, wall hangings made out of wood. You can tailor your organizing and your crafting experience to what works for you. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that you have a quality day.